Okay, so here we are with Victoria in her beautiful Flying Dream studio on Salt Spring Island. It's just such a treat, Victoria, oh, to be thanks, here and Jill. chat with you. And <laughs> Flying Dreams is a production company. Mm -hmm. It's and, an aerial arts an production aerial arts company. Production company. Yeah. And Victoria has an actual presence here, apart from a huge presence and personality, but she's got an amazing physical presence that um, you'll see some photographs and with this footage and an amazing view looking east over Galliano to the lights of Vancouver yeah, beyond. Yeah, to Lawson so, in the little gap there. So it really truly feels like a flying dream just walking in here. It does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, people often say that. It's, I think it's the elevation somehow. It, it makes you want to get up there and fly. How high are the ceilings in here? Uh, it's 40 feet to the peak. The rigging points directly above are 30 feet, and then off to the side, they're about 25. So it's sort of an ideal working height. I wanted at least that much height. I learned the apparatus at about 36, 40 feet. So I thought, well, 30 feet's the lowest I can go. <laughs> oh, my God. So Flying Dreams, can you tell me where did the name Flying Dreams come from? Um, came from my flying dreams. Yeah? Yeah, I have a lot of flying dreams. and. Um, when I wake up from those dreams, I think, I really could fly. I feel like I really could fly. And I love the feeling, the exhilaration of it. Mm -hmm. And this gives you some of that sense as well, mm -hmm. especially when you're doing certain things, um, like for example, a flying act where you're being winched up on a pulley system or whatever. Yes. I mean, it's all very complex mechanically, but you feel like you're flying. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can create that effect even doing a drop or something like that. So obviously there's a lot of mechanics involved. You want to be held up, you want to feel secure and have that safety in your heart heart and mind that this yeah. is, you're safe to do this. But once you're up there and doing your amazing acts, do you, do you detach from that concern, that intellectual world? Yeah. 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 I think you detach from everything. It's, um, it's probably the most meditative thing I do. Mm. Uh, when you're up there, you require complete focus. You need to be focused. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, a practical and safety concern, but it's also kind of natural. And people generally do that up there. So you just, you become a part of the music, you become a part of your apparatus, and you just move. So the focus is on what you are doing. Yeah. As opposed to, are the mechanics ready for me to move over here or move over there. Yeah. You don't even need to worry about that um, anymore? Sometimes if you've got something complex like a mm -hmm. pulley system and you're, you've got musical cues or visual cues for the riggers to pull up on, mm -hmm. um, you can get majorly messed up if they drop you in the wrong place and you yeah. come down like a sack of potatoes. Do you find that there is an intuitive thing that's happening between you and the riggers? Yeah, after, after rehearsal for a yeah. while, then everybody knows, they're just, uh, yeah, they're just automatically, they're yeah, they're doing it. That's a beautiful place yeah. to be in. It is, and then you're really a team. Same with a synchronized act, when you've got three or four or five or six people up in the air at the same time. Yeah, so everybody's yeah. just so finely tuned amongst each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So before you are about to begin a show, yeah. do you have a group time, if you're working with a group of people, you've got your riggers, and then if you are performing with other people, do you have a time where you get together and just sort of move from that practical to that place? Yeah. Before you actually perform? We do. We usually, we get into a circle and it depends on the cast, it depends on the show, it depends mm -hmm. on all kinds of things, but we do always gather together. Mm -hmm. And when we did a show home, you remember mm -hmm. that one mm -hmm. with Sei Wang. Mm -hmm. Sei Wang would uh, uh, facilitate and we would do uh, a series of Buddhist prayers. Lovely. And it was, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. So, um, and he sort of guided us into becoming our characters. So in that space, that's generally what we like to do. And then a more actorly kind of thing is to do emotional relaxation and to, to bond again. It's the bonding and, and the becoming somebody else. Yeah. Oh, that becoming just, somebody else. Mm -hmm. So moving outside of yourself. Yeah. Moving outside of your ego. Yeah. yeah. And becoming some other character. Yeah. 
which is very fun. Yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> and we can. We're all, yeah. all, we're all these characters inside. Yeah, right? yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and here you're allowed to be whatever. Well, I mean, sometimes it's scripted what sort of a character you are, but still, you have a, a huge spectrum to work with. Yeah. So you have, I understand, is it three shows that you've done? Here, we actually did four. Um, we did one pre-home, which ran for a much shorter period of time. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Um, yes, we've done the four here. And these are performances that are a three three nights and then there and then during the week as well and then the weekend uh, okay, usually so yeah we've done either three or four they've, they've run I think 12 or 15 shows was the most we run I can't remember now <laughs> but um, we generally run Thursday Friday Saturday and whom we also did a matinee on Sunday mm -hmm. it's spectacular coming into the shows and I can imagine for a first time person, I, I remember yeah. my first time coming down those wonderful stone steps and opening the door. Yeah. And this amazing view out here. And then you had, well, it depended on the show whether it, all the chairs were in this beautiful uh, theater style, yeah. raised and then slanted down so you could see or off to the side. And, and it, it, you couldn't believe you were on Salisbury <laughs> It's, it's magical walking in that door, and it still gets me, you know? Yeah, I come in that door sometimes and I look and I'm like, wow, yeah. <laughs> it's magical in here. I've just been walking all my dreams. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you have amazing music along with it. And yeah. the last one, it was it was really fun. There was so much dialogue going on, and there was a whole play and action. Yeah. And incorporating that with the amazing work you do on the ropes. That was a hard job, because um, I, I wanted to write a play that was um, organically incorporating the aerial. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure I quite achieved it in that particular one yet, but that's kind of what I'm working on, to, to create something that stands as a play on its own, but includes the aerial mm -hmm. as part of the story, as mm -hmm. part of the storytelling. Do you, <clears throat> how much of these, the content of these, performances are yours? How much of the script is yours? Uh, it's all mine. <laughs> all <laughs> I of write, you yeah, are. I write all the scripts. Um, and that's a big job. That is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much from it though. I, I, um, in my background, I was a writer for a period of time mm -hmm. and um, had a published novel and, and worked as a journalist for a while in Toronto. And so I had that in my background. And then I found when I arrived here on Salt Spring, I began to incorporate everything I'd ever done in my entire life. You know, the dance, the aerial, even the martial arts um, came to bear on what I did, and certainly the writing. And I've been writing since my 20s, I suppose. So I just tossed off a script in the first one, a bedtime story, because I needed something to glue the aerial acts together. So it was that idea of just sticking aerial together. And then, um, and then for the second one, we didn't do dialogue. That was home. It was yeah. done without dialogue. But music. Yeah, music. Yeah. A lot it was of music. It felt like it, it was, was dialogue. Yes, but it yes. Inter. And in fact, it was dialogue in the sense that I think that was the most interactive thing we did. In that, people in the audience were on their own journey. Mm -hmm. So we all went on a journey together. Yes. And that was, that to was, Mount yeah. <laughs> yeah, to Mount Kailash, yeah, we did. Thank you so much, Victoria. This is really a pleasure, and I know that you're going to, I think there's a lot more in store for us today. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I'm planning on it. <laughs> well, this was an amazing, amazing interview that we had with Victoria at Flying Dreams, and, um, here we are coming out into the real world, but yet not. Um, just being up, watching her and seeing that, uh, that performance, it makes me realize we can all answer to our dreams. We can all find our passion and uh, we all resonate there. Wow, the world can be a pretty special place.